Hi, I'm Dr. Dave Janda, and please welcome to our Operation Freedom platform, WeThePeopleProcessing.com. You know, are, are you tired of being threatened to be canceled just because you have a company focused on liberty and freedom? Well, worry no more, folks. WeThePeopleProcessing.com is your go-to merchant services, freedom-based company to provide business service payment solutions. We The People Processing provides their clients a cancel culture free platform which is domestically based. They provide competitive rates, no contracts with next day funding, a fully vetted and like-minded financial infrastructure and full support for integrations, implementation and e-commerce efforts. Bottom line, WeThePeopleProcessing.com focuses on defending your company's free market growth, values, and future. Check them out at www.wethepeopleprocessing.com. Once you're on the site, enter in password Operation Freedom or call 855 499 2024. That's WeThePeopleProcessing.com. Then, when on the website, Enter Operation Freedom as your password or call 855-499-2024. Mr. President-elect, go ahead. Can you say categorically any question? Mr. President-elect, can you give us a question? Don't be rude. Don't be rude. No, I'm not going to give you a question. I'm not going to give you a question. Can you say categorically You are fake news. Sir. Hi, I'm Dr. Dave Janda. Welcome back to Dave versus the MSM. I'd like to thank you for joining me today. We are available 24-7 with extra shows, extra content, extra guests, extra analysis at DaveJanda.com. We hope you become part of our Freedom family and also join us every Sunday. It's live and free from 2 to 5 Eastern. Go to DaveJanda.com for Operation Freedom Radio Show. Hit the Listen Live button. You'll tune in to our Wham Talk 1600 Freedoms Bunker and our guests and analysis we bring forward every Sunday. We hope you become part of our Freedom family. The title of today's presentation is Totalitarians Lose Control of the Narrative. You know, they're, they want you to think that they're all powerful, that they can never be beat. No, they're actually in the process of being beat. And what you see, and all these things you see happening around our country and around the world, are out of their desperation and their panic. They despise accountability. They despise transparency. They despise facts and data and science. They say they embrace it. Oh, no, no. They keep it at arm's length because it is, it is their Waterloo. It is their demise. And they want to keep you misinformed and disinformed and completely uninformed so you don't realize how it's all fallen apart for them. Because if you make that realization, then, well, you'll stand up to them. And you won't be locked down. And you won't watch their propaganda on the tube. And you'll actually go out and speak to family and friends and neighbors and coworkers about what's really going on. That's what they don't want. That's what we want in the independent media. Because that's what melts the witch. A, a number of people are stepping up on a number of different planes. Cindy Drucker and, and Tom Osmek recently in the Epic Times took on this whole issue of ESG, environmental social governance scores. Here's what they said. ESG is a globalist scam meant to usher in a one world government. And this was from James Lindsay, who's the author of Race Marxism and other great books, which challenges narratives that have been pushed by the syndicate. In his book, Race Marxism, he actually takes on the environmental, social, and governance scores, puts it right in his crosshairs. And he calls ESG a weapon in the hands of social justice warriors to shake down corporations and a tool 
in the hands of those seeking to impose a one world government. You see, to institute their one world government, they have to take down the speed bump, and as I've outlined to you for 12 years since the inception of the radio show, Operation Freedom. The speed bump has been the United States. And the speed bump is composed of the people of the United States and our Constitution. Which is why the New York Times recently in an op-ed called for the end of the Constitution. You see, those unalienable rights granted to us from God as outlined in the Constitution are what the syndicate fears and us exercising those rights. Now, one way they keep us under their evil thumb is with tax collectors. This is not just true in the United States. It's been true for eons. Just go back in history, right? The tax collectors. But they recently put an announcement out that they were going to up their game. Why would they decide to up their game? Because they feel they have lost control of the narrative. And the only way they can gain back that control is with force. So in the recently passed Biden-Harris inflation reduction, what I call Inflation Production Act, of $750 billion, the last thing we need to, fly, to fight inflation, more government spending, is $80 billion to bring to the IRS and to bring in 87,000 new agents. Now, some people who love the IRS say, well, they're just replacing people who are retiring. Bull. Bull. There might be a number of people retiring, but then the question is, why are there so many people retiring out of the IRS? Are they being given directives? And they're saying, I can't, I can't go along with that. I'm out of here. Is that why? I mean, nobody, I mean, they're talking about, well, 50,000 of these are retirees, so really only they're adding 37,000. Adding 37,000 when we have how many, how many people defending our borders on the north and the south? And our borders in the air, airports? How, how many? How many? What? We have babies not getting baby formula and we're bringing 87,000 tax collectors in? What? We have a military that's not making their, their quotas? Well, we all, we all know why. When you create a situation where you take people's individuality and, and, and health freedom away from them, they're not going to sign up, right? And especially if you're telling them how they're going to have to think, right? Ooh. We have so many issues and we're bringing in 87,000. Even if 50,000 retire, my question is, why are there 50,000 retiring? Oh, they're just getting older. Stop it. Are they given directives that they, that they won't follow? So the IRS, on their website, put out a list of major duties. And they put it out on, through social media as well. And then people started talking about it in the independent media. And the IRS lovers were like, well, that's not true. Well, you don't, yeah. Here's what, here are the bullet points. Adhere to the highest standards of conduct, especially in maintaining honesty and integrity. I don't know if you've ever gone through an audit. I have. Targeted audits. And the words honesty and integrity from the IRS side of the equation, at least the last ones I went through, uh are not in anyone's vocabulary. Now, back in 1992 and 1993, when I took on the Clinton administration and Hillary Care and, and helped expose it, with the, along with Senator Robert Dole, who was the Senate Majority Leader at the time, um, the next year I got we got targeted, my family and I, by the IRS. And but the IRS back then, um, 
the agents were respectful. They were very nice. They were they they took very little time. Uh, within a half a day, they met with our accountant, and in 1990, I think it was three the first time, they said, "Okay, this is fine. Thank you. Please tell Doctor and Mrs. Janda we we appreciate uh, us going through this, and we're sorry this happened." And they know why it happened, right? I mean, they were very straightforward, very nice. Okay, they came back 94, 95, 96, all the way through 2000. Same thing, ended nothing, okay? But respectful. In 2013, I was targeted by Obama and Biden because I exposed Obamacare and what it was all about. About it being two parts, the first part hidden in the stimulus bill with the rationing boards and the enforcement boards. Did a video and it got over 3 million hits and that really bothered them and they put the irs on it okay that was a completely different audit it lasted nine months it was targeted they got zero unreported income which is what they were looking for but they dragged the thing out they were hostile they were nasty they they were disrespectful and it had nothing to do with honesty and integrity from their side of the equation okay so the major duties, another bullet point that they put out that they're looking in these 87,000 is work a minimum of 50 hours per week, which may include irregular hours and be on call 24-7, including holidays and weekends. All right. Third bullet point, maintain a level of fitness necessary to effectively respond to life-threatening situations on the job. Now, the IRS lovers will tell you, whoa, 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 well, they put that out, but that, that was... That was a mistake because this was for the investigative uh, uh, division. This is for the investigative division and and department and and not for all eighty seven thousand. Well, okay. Well, how many are we talking? Well, there are three thousand in the investigative d department of the IRS. Three thousand. Okay, three thousand. And. Uh, well, uh, Bob, 2,100 of them are retiring, are stepping away. Well, wait a minute. 70%? Why? Are they being given some kind of weird direct? Why? Why? 70% turnover? Carry a firearm and be willing to use deadly force if necessary. Well, that's not for all 87,000. Okay, for how many? Because remember, this is the same government that told us that this was safe and effective when it was not, ever. And that these worked, and that lockdowns worked, and social distancing worked. None of it was true. It was all a con, right? So can we believe anything these people say? Well, this is only for 3,000. Really? Because my sources in D.C. say it goes more than the, in the investigative division, this job description. Maybe my sources are wrong. I doubt it. Be willing and able to participate in arrest, execution of search warrants, and other dangerous assignments. Now, the IRS, off of that post on their own website and social media, took down the part about carrying a firearm, and they did not respond to what they had put on their website for, over, for a week. And then they came out and said, well, this is for the investigative division. Well, why did it take them a week? And why did they initially take down that part about carrying a firearm? Because they got caught. I'm sure it wasn't for 87,000 agents to get a gun. But on the other hand, you wonder, because they've been allocated AR-15s, they've been allocated hundreds of thousands of rounds of ammo. Remember that over the years? Stretching back all the way into the Obama administration? You can't trust anything they say. And by the way, I did a little research on this investigative department. Uh, there was an Inspector General's report of the Treasury back in 2012. This is the latest report. 2012. And between 2009 and 2011, three years, 2009, 10, 11, there were something like eight discharges of weapons by the IRS that were appropriate. Eight. And 11 that were accidental. And the inspector general said these people aren't trained appropriately. 
58% of firearms discharges by the IRS, 58% were accidental, mistakes. Can you imagine if you had 58% rate of making mistakes on your IRS tax return, what would happen to you? And why are they having to have hundreds of thousands of rounds and AR-15s when the inspector general says they're not trained appropriately and they're shooting their weapons off 19 times over three years' time? Why do they need hundreds of thousands of rounds? It makes people wonder. So when people say, no, you're overstating this issue with, no, it's not overstating. It's putting it on the line. And those that are saying they're overstating, they got their head up their rear end. They're part of the problem. They're covering for it. 87,000 new agents. When we have a border sieve at both north, south, you name it. When we have kids that are, aren't getting baby formula. They've completely lost control of the narrative because people are seeing reality. And you can thank the independent media for that. And then we had the CDC coming out saying, we have new guidance, new guidance for COVID. After the three-year goat rodeo and the oppression they have put people through. Those exposed to the virus are no longer required to quarantine. So lockdowns. Unvaccinated people now have the same guidance as vaccinated people. What's the medical translation of that? This does not provide benefit. Not effective. Students can stay in class after being exposed to the virus. What does that mean? Social distancing? It's no longer recommended to screen those without symptoms. Translation? Asymptomatic transfer doesn't occur. They've lost control of the narrative because their house of cards is built on fraud, on con, on coercion. Which brings me to Hunter Biden's laptop and Joe Biden. Remember Biden? I had nothing to do with the, 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 any of that. I've delivered new disclosures demolished Biden's denials on Hunter dealings. This is from Jonathan Turley, a law professor at George Washington University, no less. New disclosures are demolishing the continued denials of Biden that he had no knowledge and nothing to do with his son's business interests. The emails include exchanges with Joe Biden meeting with at least 14 of Hunter Biden's business associates while Biden was vice president. It appears that Biden met with at least 14 of Hunter Biden's associates from U.S., Mexico, Ukraine, China, and Kazakhstan over the course of his vice presidency. And then we have Biden's transport secretary, you know, Buttigieg, couldn't even fix the potholes when he was mayor at South Bend, Indiana, says pain of high gas prices is a benefit. How's that narrative grab you, huh? This from Summit News. Biden Transportation, Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg has again suggested that high gas prices are a good thing because it forces people to accept a transition to green energy agenda. The narrative. The con. The coercion. It's all falling apart. FBI, and, and I've always said this for years, the way this ends is by whistleblowers coming forward. And it's happening. It's happening. FBI whistleblowers reveal bureau leadership is pressuring agents to artificially pad domestic terrorism data to help push the Biden narrative. Congressman Jim Jordan said whistleblowers have disclosed FBI leadership is pressuring agents to artificially pad domestic terrorism data. The FBI is weaving a narrative that helps the Biden regime while painting Trump supporters as problems, criminals. It is all falling apart at the seams. They are desperate and they are panicked. So what do we do? We keep the heat on. 
You keep bringing information to your friends and family and coworkers and neighbors and maybe even people you just see on the street. You know what I love to do at gas stations? When I'm pumping gas, I'll go to the other side and say, hey, so what do you think about these gas prices? Oh, they're terrible. I go, so, you know, are you aware? I did, I did, I'm aware. I just became aware of this, that, that Biden's releasing these strategic petroleum reserves, and they're not going for people here to bring the gas price down. Not that it would help much, but still, any penny helps. It's being sent to China, to foreign governments. What? Oh, yeah. And then I tell you, and here are the websites I like to go to to get more information about it. You know what people do? They thank me. And then I say to them, and make sure you pass this information on to others. Don't worry, man, I will. If that's happening in the People's Republic of Ann Arbor, imagining what's happening around the country. Their narrative is not only collapsing, it's collapsed. And it's ending for them. And we need to keep networking information. Because by doing so, you're peacefully protesting the syndicate and their freedom stripping agenda. We are available 24 7 at DaveJanda.com. Extra shows, extra content, extra videos, tremendous amount of free content. I have a video up there called The Road to Freedom, Your and Our Road to Freedom. I hope you'll watch it. It's about my family's four-generational battle since the late 1800s against the globalist syndicate. I assure you, you will never see anything like it in the bought-off lamestream fake media. Not even close. I thank you for joining me today. Until next time, Dave Janda signing off. Dream big and dare to fail. Thanks for your time today.